Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to show you how to use Google Finance function. The Google Finance formula allows you to import real-time financial and currency market data into Google Sheets, as well as enabling you to track current stock and shares information. It can also be used to retrieve historical securities data. This function imports data from the Google Finance web application, which provides daily stock prices, news from the currency and financial markets, and other information on market trends. But let me show you in practice. For this example, I'm going to use AAPL, so the Apple Inc. ticker for the Google Finance function. So firstly, I visited the Google Finance website and keyed in AAPL, as you can see right here. As a result, you can see all the current stock indicators for Apple Inc. But let me show you in a Google Sheets file. This is how it looks like if you're using the basic version of the function. So you type in Google Finance, there we go. The ticker is AAPL. And then we've put our attributes in column A. So I'm gonna select A2 and press enter. There we go. And now I want this information for all the fields that I have listed in column A. So I'm gonna drag this over here. And the Google Finance function pulls the corresponding information into the spreadsheet, as you can see. So in this example, I've listed my different attributes that I want to look at in column A and then use them as a reference in the formula. So it allows me to quickly go down the list without having to change the formula every time. But alternatively, I could also hard code each attribute into the formula. Let me show you. I'm going to type the formula here. So we start again by typing Google Finance. We've put our ticker right here in cell B1 but I want to fix the location of this cell reference by putting the dollar sign in front of the B and the one. So by doing this, I can then drag down the formula straight down to D18, but the formula will keep this cell reference constant. Of course, now the cell location of the attribute in this case is the name, so B4. I'm not going to fix these cell locations because I want to have different attributes for every cell. So drag it down as well. There we go. Now the third example. With the Google Finance function, you can also obtain historical stock information for a single day. So the syntax of this formula is, of course, Google Finance. You type in the ticker. And now as attributes, I'm going to select all. So I want to give me back all of the details for a specific date. So let me find the information for the 27th of February of 2017 and press enter. There we go. So now you see information from three years ago about Apple's stock. So it's good to notice that the output of this historical attribute is more than one cell, as you can see. When calling up historical data, the formula will provide a date column and an attribute column. And in this case, because I've selected all, it's giving me back five different columns. The fact that the Google Finance formula fills multiple cells when providing historical information is usually helpful because it adds clarity to the information provided. But sometimes, however, you may want the formula to only give you a single number. Let me show you in the next example. You might want the highest price of the stock on a given day without the formula outputting a matrix including the date and the price. Here, for example, I will ask for the highest price also on the 27th of February of 2017. And again, the F Google Finance formula gives me back four different cells. If you do not want this to happen, you simply combine this formula with the index formula. So it goes as the following index Google Finance. You type in what you're looking for. And then basically using the index, for, uh, index formula, identifying that you only want the second cell of the second column returned. So let me show you. There we go. As you can see, we only have this information, the highest price of the stock on this specific day, but we've kept it in a single cell thanks to the index formula. Now, what you also can do with Google Finance is obtain historical stock information over a period of time. So not only for a single day. The way to do that is, of course, Google Finance, your ticker, and we want the price of the stock starting on the first day of 2017 and ending on the last day of that year. Finally, you choose the interval 
let, let's say weekly. There we go. That's it. Using the formula this way, it's really easy to help you create data sets and charts that will help you analyze the stock data in many different ways. So we're going to select both columns and then insert a chart. There we go. So we can analyze the closing price of the stock on specific dates. And another really helpful feature of the Google Finance function is the ability to get live currency conversion rates directly in your spreadsheets. So this can easily be done by replacing the stock ticker with the currency. So let me show you Google Finance and then you simply type in currency and the one you want to convert. For example, I want to convert the US dollar to Canadian dollar. So I will type in USD CAD and press enter. There we go. These are just a few examples of how to use the Google Finance function in Google Sheets. If you have any questions about this, please do not hesitate to comment below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks on spreadsheets and how to automate them and improve your daily work. Thank you.